welcome to Eco News International Australia Oceania. I am Justine Vicente from Sydney, bringing you stories from Australia, New Zealand and Papua New Guinea. For the headlines, COVID-19 vaccines reaches Queensland soil. South Australia embarks on phase one of vaccine rollout. Port Moresby locked down in talks after COVID-19 cases increase. Papua New Guinea grieves loss of country's first Prime Minister, Sir Michael Somare. Derby undertakes economic development and construction of new facilities. And artist Patricia Piccinini's Art of the Unfamiliar showcased in Townsville. We begin with news of the arrival of COVID-19 vaccines in the Sunshine State. Queensland, Australia's COVID-19 vaccination program commenced a day after the arrival of the Pfizer vaccine. With the state government's assurance of its safety and security, the vaccine distribution was carried out across various clinics. Our correspondent Raylene Rose Javier from Brisbane has more on this story. Raylene? Queensland's Premier Anastasia Palaszczuk and Chief Health Officer Dr. Janet Young are assuring the state of the security and safety of Queensland's COVID-19 vaccination program. The state government prepared to conduct the first vaccine shots which were held on the Gold Coast on the 22nd of February 2021. Prime Minister Scott Morrison, along with the Chief Medical Officer, Chief Nursing and Midwifery Officer, received the vaccine in Sydney on the 21st of February of this year. COVID-19 vaccinations have commenced throughout Australia from the 22nd of February 2021. The first group of people to receive the vaccines will be those who are within the priority groups, who are at high risk of COVID-19. They include frontline health workers, aged and disability care residents and staff, and those who are quarantined and border workers. Vaccination clinics will be set up in hospitals within each state and territory, and in the aged care and disability and care facilities across Australia. The increase in the number of locations will arise as more doses of the vaccine come to Australia. The government had developed the COVID-19 vaccine eligibility checker. This enables people to be informed when they can get their vaccine. Residents in Australia may use the eligibility checker to what phase they will be suitable to receive the COVID-19 vaccine. Though people may be worried about the COVID-19 vaccine, high authorities have advised Australian residents to remain safe and continue to follow government restrictions. Those who are deemed eligible to take the vaccine are encouraged to participate in the vaccination program the government is conducting. Reporting from Brisbane, Queensland, this is Raylan Rosavier, Eagle News, we live in interesting times. Thank you, Raylan. We look forward for more affirmative updates. At the same time in Adelaide, South Australia begins their phase one of vaccine rollout. After months of restrictions and uncertainty, the arrival of COVID-19 vaccine instills hope in every Australian. Eagle News correspondent Aubrey Asanon reports. Aubrey? With 612 total cases, 4 deaths as of February 23, 2021, the people of South Australia welcomed the arrival of what many have waited for since the COVID-19 pandemic began, the vaccine. After lockdowns, restrictions, testing, and overall mass hysteria and uncertainty, the people of South Australia can finally initiate the preparation for what will hopefully be the end of the virus. Official arrival of the vaccine occurred on February 21, with the vaccine rollout program beginning the next day. The vaccine is manufactured by the American pharmaceutical company Pfizer under its Australian branch, with the vaccine given the name Community. A dose of the vaccine contains the genetic material of the virus, so once vaccinated, the body creates the spike protein inherent of the virus, which the immune system will recognize and learn to defend against. Hence, even if the virus enters the body of a vaccinated individual, that person will not exhibit extreme symptoms. However, it is still unknown how effective the vaccine is against the transmission of the virus. 
which still possess a risk of virus transmission to those unvaccinated. As a result, health authorities have urged those vaccinated to continue in adhering to restrictions. Social distancing, wearing a face mask, washing hands, and self-isolating when necessary. Yet despite this glimmer of hope, the challenge of administering the vaccine to the masses still remains. The first phase of the vaccine rollout in the state involves the vaccination of frontline healthcare workers, aged care, disability care staff and residents, and border and quarantine staff. This was highlighted by the state premier Stephen Marshall and chief public health officer Nicholas Paria as they took their first shot of the vaccine. Treatment of the vaccine involves two doses of the vaccine, with the second dose to come 21 days after the first vaccine shot. Nine vaccine hubs have been designated throughout the country, with different groups taking priority to receive the vaccine at each phase of the rollout. The vaccine program was designed to ensure the treatment would be available to each Australian. Despite South Australia's excellent performance against the virus, full elimination of the disease is still far in the future. However, the arrival of the vaccine has reminded all South Australians that the end of the pandemic is drawing near. Reporting from Adelaide, Australia, this is Aubrey Asanyon of Eagle News. We live in interesting times. Thanks, Aubrey. We hope this vaccine leads us to a COVID-free country. Meanwhile, in Papua New Guinea, the implementation of another lockdown in Port Moresby is in discussion after news of a continuous rise in COVID-19 cases. Authorities advise residents to get tested and stay at home while some residents are not in favour of another lockdown. Our correspondent Angeline Ribuya will give us more details. Angeline? The National Control Centre announced that the National Capital District, Port Moresby, will likely implement another lockdown due to the continuous increase of coronavirus cases. The controller of the Papua New Guinea COVID-19 National Pandemic Response, David Manning, and two of his family members were tested positive for the current global health enemy, COVID-19. Though they are now isolated in one of the quarantine facilities, Mr. Manning still does his duty as the controller by urging the residents of this country to go to their nearest health centers and get tested. According to Mr. Manning, it is important to know your present medical condition or status for your own safety along with the safety of your friends and loved ones. He declares that elders and people with ailments are especially vulnerable to COVID-19. Meanwhile, the police headquarters office was closed for several days due to an identified COVID-19 case. All staff were advised to stay at home while the headquarters building was being disinfected. Not all residents of this country are in favor of another lockdown. They believe in the importance of maintaining their routines with this new normal situation. No need to suspend school classes, church gatherings, and other indispensable services for the people. No, I, I don't like that to be done because they said about the numbers increasing, but I don't believe that numbers. We are okay. Because this COVID-19 talk about it. What we think and what we believe, it's coming. But it's not coming. I don't believe that. We've got COVID and that's something I like about COVID. One advantage of COVID. Mm -hmm. When we space and then we have enough food, we can see students properly like now. But if you have them, they all come at one time and you know. Yeah. And COVID is really, it's increasing here. Yeah. We have they done it last year? We did. It's the first time and we did it well. So when it COVID come again now, it will be a problem to us. So you're used to it? Yes. Because last year we have you know, like, we have sleepless nights because we provide meal passes for the students. See? We get all their names and then their, uh, what you call their classes, and we look at their timetable 
and that's how we work this out. Okay, so yeah, this is what they were claiming this. So when this COVID come, you know, we need to be clean. Russians are the rich. They don't have this whole cup coming in. And I said, no, we are in the university. You need to be like one, educated. Because of this, so there's no, you know. How can we? We only think because, uh, like, I've heard that vaccine has been uh, successful in some part of the world. And, uh, yeah, I have a neighbor. He said in his place, Whatever point of view you have regarding the COVID-19 lockdown in Papua New Guinea, it's important to remember that prevention is better than cure. We must be vigilant for one another's health and safety. Reporting from Port Moresby, Papua New Guinea, this is Angeline Mauricio Ribuya, Eagle News. We live in interesting times. Thank you, Angeline. Let's continue to be ever more careful and vigilant. After the break, we will hear of the loss of Papua New Guinea's first Prime Minister, Sir Michael Somare. Plus, let's learn more on Dalby's road to a new economic development. And let's take a look at an Australian artist's interpretation of how technology affects our lives, showcased in Townsville. All these stories when Eagle News International Australia Oceania returns, stay with us. Welcome back. You are watching Eagle News International Australia Oceania. Staying in Papua New Guinea, the country is now engulfed in sadness as the news of the country's first Prime Minister, Sir Michael Somare's passing, was announced. Eagle News correspondent Echo Hoteleza Kinola is here to share the story. Echo! The founding father of Papua New Guinea and the country's Grand Chief died due to pancreatic cancer at the age of 84. Current Prime Minister James Marape declared several dates as public holidays to pay respect in silence, peace, and mourning to the former Prime Minister. Sir Michael Samare was born in Rabaul and was a native of Karau, East Sipik, on April 9, 1936. He graduated from Sogeri High School and became a teacher then a radio announcer. He was a Minister of Foreign Affairs and was a Governor of East Sipik. He was the first and the longest serving Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea but retired from Parliament in 2017 after being in office for over five decades. Um, Grand Chief Sir Michael Samari was a, a visionary leader and undoubtedly he was a a very good leader who, who had big dreams for Papua New Guinea or PNG and um, he was a great man who brought PNG to independence and he, he has won the hearts of all the citizens, locals and everyone who knew him, they, they love him and um, he, he was loved at heart and his, his passing is a, is a great loss for PNG and every one of us and we are really saddened for, for the loss of um, our Grand Chief Sir Michael Somare. He was the Prime Minister of this country in three stints which lasted for 17 years, 1975 to 1980, from 1982 to 1985 and from 2002 to 2010. No wonder he was tagged as the master politician. Papua New Guinea is a melting pot of tribes but Sir Somare was able to unite the nation. This is one of the reasons why Prime Minister James Marape proclaimed that Sir Somare's contributions will be unmatched by his successors. And he was a good Prime Minister because during this time we were not we were not hungry. Our currency was all right. We were using our money, good and proper. But I was in grade one when he was prime minister. 
That's why I got a good memory about him because of when he get independence, the thing changed rapidly. He yeah. make a lot of contribution to the growth of Papua New Guinea. Uh, I send my concordance message to his uh, loved ones and his families at uh, Wewek. And he's a good governor of uh, Wewek. I was one of the early who witnesses the Australian flag going down and Papua New Guinea flag going up. Our hero, Prime Minister Michael Sumare, witnessing that moment was one of the days where I wouldn't forget. But thank you for the minister who have did the greatest work, have led the nation, and I'm just passing my condolences to our late Prime Minister Michael Somare for his leadership, and we will never forget his legacy. And Sir Somare will be missed dearly by all Papua New Guineans. In this moment of grief, we would like to extend our deepest sympathy and condolences to the family and loved ones. The nation will continue to be inspired to stand on their own feet, to work harder, and to master their own destiny. Reporting from Port Moresby, Papua New Guinea, this is Echo Hortaleza Quinola, Eagle News. We live in interesting times. Thank you, Echo. A heart go out to the people of Papua New Guinea. Moving back to Australia, new facilities and establishments are underway in Dalby, Queensland as a population in this town increases. The rise of new development, employment and other job opportunities are expected to improve as well. Our correspondent Trixie Camacho reports. Trixie! Here in the town of Dalby, there are new facilities and developments undergoing due to the increase of population. Dolby is a small town in the Western Down region in which includes a population of approximately 12,700 people. This number continues to increase in which new facilities and developments are being established in the area. Residents from Dolby have been traveling to Toowoomba to access services and to even go shopping. Traveling distance is approximately 82.3 kilometers away. That is a one hour car trip to shop for luxury items or access professional service. The benefit of new facilities, stores and development allow people to reduce traveling time and expenses to access the necessities. This will also increase employability for contractors, builders and furthermore job opportunities once the development is established. One of the new establishments in the area is a nationally re-owned retail store. Located on Cunningham Street, one of Dolby's main streets, this will be accessible to many residents. With the rapid increase of population in the area, it is anticipated for more facilities and development to be constructed in the area. Residents are eager to see what's yet to come. Reporting from Dolby, Australia, this is Trixie Camacho. Eagle News We live in interesting times. Thanks, Trixie. It's great to see the growth of this small town. An Australian artist in Townsville exhibits her own collection of works entitled Curious Affection, showcasing her unique and thought-provoking take on how technology affects one's life. Let's join Eagle News correspondent Morgan Goodfellow as he takes us along this exhibition. Morgan? Patricia Piccinini, Creations of the Unconscious, Science and Surrealism, brings to light a concern for others we may never have thought of before. Curious Affection, the exhibition by Patricia, is showcased in Townsville. Patricia Piccinini is an Australian artist. She was born in 1965 in Sierra Leone and migrated to Australia in 1972 with her family. Patricia first earned a degree in Economic History and then a Bachelor of Arts in Painting. Early in her career, she spent time in medical museums making drawings of preserved specimens. Patricia's work has now been recognised and displayed on an international scale. According to the National Gallery of Victoria, Australia, Piccinini has an ambivalent attitude towards technology and she uses her artistic practice as a forum for discussion about how technology impacts upon life. Patricia's exhibition, Curious Affection, is on display now from the 19th of February until the 16th of April 2021 at the Pinnacles Gallery in Townsville, showcasing her collective work. Patricia Piccinini has pursued an interest in the human form 
and the possible influence and enhancement through biotechnological intervention. Her abstract view on the persisting troubles of the unknown brings to life an expression of uniqueness that can only be found in a work displayed here today. Reporting from Townsville, Australia, this is Morgan Goodfellow, Eagle News. We live in interesting times. Many thanks, Morgan. Her words indeed give us food for thought. And that concludes today's program. Thank you for watching Eagle News International, Australia, Oceania. Join us again next week as we share more stories from our viewers across Australia, New Zealand and Papua New Guinea. Visit our websites on eaglenews.net and eaglenewslive.com and don't forget to follow us on twitter.com forward slash eaglenews and facebook.com forward slash eaglenews. Stay safe, stay strong and take care everyone. From Sydney, Australia, I am Justine Vicente, Eagle News. We live in interesting times.